So hi everyone, this is just uh, a, a kind of uh, update on what's going on with uh, with Fedora, uh, with the program and with the community um, over the last few months and kind of uh, going forward over uh, over the next uh, six months to uh, to a year or so. Uh, this is somewhat similar to the presentation that I gave at last, uh, last month's user group meeting, uh, but with some uh, more recent uh, updates just based on uh, what's been going on lately. So in terms of what we're trying to do with Fedora for the rest of this year and really going into next year, there, there's a few kind of high level objectives. Um, one, and, and you know, those of you that have been following along with Fedora probably are uh, aware of this, but we are working on version uh, 6.0, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit in this presentation, um, but also mention that uh, at last month's meeting, Andrew Woods did a, a pretty deep dive on the details of Fedora 6. Um, and so if you're interested in uh, more of the technical details that uh, that video is up on YouTube and you can uh, you can find it. Um, we're planning on getting to a beta release this year uh, and then we're, we're very committed to uh, releasing Fedora 6 with uh, really robust migration toolings for um, all of the previous versions. So a lot of the focus uh, these days has been around Fedora 3 and we're certainly making sure that we have tooling to bring um, Fedora 3 repositories forward to the latest version. Uh, but also version four and version uh, version five. And that's related, uh, particularly the Fedora three migrations to this uh, work that's really just beginning around uh, a migration grant that we got from uh, the Institute of Museum and Library Services um, in the United States to um, pursue a, a, a pilots and a, a pathways for migrations. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that during the presentation, but um, that this has really been our focus on sort of the roadmap level for um, uh, for some time now. So when it comes to uh, Fedora 6 itself, there are a few high level goals that we're really trying to achieve here. Um, we recognize that migrating from particularly version three uh, has been a challenge for uh, many reasons um, for, for people in the community uh, and uh, a majority of Fedora installations are still uh, running version three. Um, and so one of the things we really wanted to do with version six is reduce the effort required uh, to migrate. So just making it easier and faster to get data um, into this, this new version of the software. Um, but we also wanted to provide some additional value uh, with this version of uh, Fedora to make the migrations uh, worthwhile. Uh, and so we focused there on sort of enhancing um, digital uh, preservation in, in particular, uh, those, uh, uh, those kinds of features. Um, and, uh, and then finally, uh, trying to address some of the performance and scale uh, issues that uh, had arisen, particularly in version four and five, um, and trying to, uh, to address those. So, so those are some of the main things we're really trying to achieve with this um, latest version of Fedora. Uh, and in terms of just kind of what we're doing here, uh, Fedora 4 and 5 uh, was backed, uh, currently is backed by uh, Mode Shape, which is its own open source uh, repository software that we layered an API on top of. And uh, unfortunately, Mode Shape has been the cause of some of the performance and scale issues that we've encountered over time in this, um, these versions of Fedora. So we made a decision in, in, in version 6 to move away from this back end and re-architect how the data is actually stored in Fedora, uh, in particular by implementing uh, the Oxford Common File layout, which is um, its own uh, emerging uh, open standard for uh, preservation, uh, which is uh, came out of the Fedora community, but is much broader than that now. Uh, but we are really focused on trying to retain alignment with the Fedora API. This was formally specified in version five. Um, and so we don't want to make major API changes in this latest version. Um, we really are just kind of focused on this backend storage layout and, and how things um, actually get persisted uh, in Fedora. And, and again, as I said, there is a focus here as well on making sure that we release with um, really adequate migration tooling and support. Uh, and this is a commitment that the governance group has is, is really um, uh, made clear to us that uh, uh, we don't want to release this next version un unless we're confident that we can bring um, a majority of the community forward uh, to, to be able to use it. In terms of the OCFL itself, this Oxford Common File layout, 
again, this is kind of an overview presentation, so I'm not going into a lot of detail on, on any of these things, but um, if you go to our YouTube channel uh, or you go to the previous um, uh, user group meeting, you'll, you'll find some, um, some more detailed presentations on, on, on some of these things, and I can certainly point them to you if you're, if you're curious. But um, at a high level, what we think the OCFL is going to offer is, is largely these kind of five elements. So uh, the idea of parsability here is just referring to being able to see the structure of your files and folders uh, on disk, on your storage media, in a way that is readable by machines, but also by humans. Um, something that was uh, is similar to the way things are laid out in Fedora 3, but um, in a more standardized fashion. Um, but also robustness in the sense of uh, strong fixity checking uh, and preservation, um, a strong sense of versioning, um, but also the, the idea of storage diversity here just indicating that the OCFL really doesn't have anything to say about the particular type of storage media that you use. You can, it's, it's really just a, a, a standard for how you lay things out in a, in a file and folder structure. So it's really um, compatible with, with cloud storage as well as local storage. Um, and finally, the idea of completeness. And here, this is just means being able to rebuild your repository from the, the, the contents on disk, which uh, again was a feature that was uh, available in Fedora 3 and kind of went away in version 4 and 5 and something that um, we're, we're bringing back in this latest version, but again, in a more uh, standardized way. Uh, and so some of the benefits here, um, uh, really, again, just to, um, uh, to emphasize these, uh, being able to uh, have your data uh, in, a, in a way that's parsable by humans and machines that's independent of the application, um, so that everything is stored uh, in self-contained objects on disk um, in a human and machine readable way, being able to rebuild the repository. Um, and something maybe I didn't emphasize is just this um, idea of being able to have fewer migrations in the future. So once you've migrated to this format, the idea is that future versions of Fedora and ideally other applications that um, use the same standard uh, will conform to that uh, file and folder layout on disk. So there'll be fewer migrations to do in the, uh, in the future by kind of adopting this as a standardized way to um, store the, uh, uh, the content. And just to give you a very kind of high level picture of, of what this looks like at a kind of system diagram level, um, you know, we already have this sort of Fedora uh, REST API that's built on top of the, the core logic that Fedora provides. And then all we're doing here is just adding this kind of storage layer where you have uh, some files and directories um, that are uh, kind of uh, at a layer beneath that, uh, while also providing some uh, database caching sort of off to the side. So everything is really stored in this OCFL uh, format, uh, but for performance reasons, we anticipate having some uh, caching uh, as well. And we are currently doing a lot of testing around performance and, and now is a really good time if, if you have particular performance or scale use cases and concerns around Fedora. Um, we have a, a series of tests that we've, we've put together uh, that test both performance and scale. Um, and I encourage folks to reach out to me if you're interested. Uh, these are the kinds of tests that you can sort of run locally or you can run in a, a cloud environment. And, and we're, we're doing some of this now. We'll be reporting on the results, but um, all that stuff is available for testing if, uh, if you have use cases you'd like to explore. So a little bit about the grant. This is something that is gonna be a big focus of my time over the next uh, 18 months or so. Um, so this uh, just came in over the summer. It's a, about a quarter million dollar grant, again, from, from the IMLS, the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Um, and the focus here is on migrating from Fedora 3 to Fedora 6. Um, it, we still will be supporting four and five migrations, uh, but not as part of the grant. That's just effort that we're doing um, as part of our regular uh, uh, efforts on the software. I do have some links embedded in this presentation and, and afterwards I'll, I'll drop a, a link to the presentation itself into the collaborative notes. Um, so you'll be able to access this uh, uh, afterwards. And so, you know, for the grant again, as I mentioned, the, the most Fedora installations are, are running unsupported versions of the software, version three or, or some even 
earlier, I think we recognize that uh, content in these systems is uh, at risk, We're running legacy software, there's no longer, you know, security updates, or patches, and even the, the version of Java that uh, Fedora 3 runs on is, is uh, going to become uh, obsolete at some point. And so um, really important to be able to get everyone uh, forward to um, a supported version. Uh, but also recognizing that migrations in general take a lot of time and effort, and in particular, migrations from Fedora 3 have proven to um, be particularly challenging. It, and, and so the goal here really is to try to bring everyone forward um, onto a modern supported version of Fedora. Currently, that's version 6, but um, really it's just getting everyone to um, a, a modern version. So in terms of what we're going to do with this grant, and, and we've really just started this effort, September 1st was the was the first day uh, where we, we started to kind of work on this grant. Um, in the initial phase is is going to be working with pilot partners, and I'll talk a little bit about that, um, and working with them to go through a migration uh, so that we can develop, test, and refine the, the tools uh, that, that we have for, for doing migrations. But a big part of this is going to be producing documentation, best practices, pathways for, for others to follow. Um, and so after this first phase, we'll be producing a toolkit that will um, have a lot of resources in it for folks that want to try their own migrations. Um, and, and so the second phase of this project is going to be kind of disseminating that. Um, and the third phase, and I'll talk about these in a little bit more detail, um, we'll be hosting a, a dedicated migration training event. Now, we're not sure yet uh, what this might look like uh, if, if by the time we host this, there'll be uh, people will be traveling again. Um, so there's going to be some online components, certainly as well. But um, I think the, the, the shape of that, that final event is still to be determined. Uh, so a little bit more detail here on the, on the phases. So phase one is now until May uh, of next year. And this is working with two pilot partners. And really we're trying to just kind of document all of the steps along that, that process. So what are the decision points? How do they get made? What are the best practices? How does metadata mapping work? Everyone's gonna make their own decisions, but we're going to try to document how those decisions get made and maybe point to some best practices and, and just try to make this a little bit easier for people that want to pursue it. Um, with the goal of, of course, of producing this community toolkit which uh, will disseminate. Um, uh, these are the pilot partners. So University of Virginia is a long time Fedora user and, and they have a custom uh, front end on the particular repository we'll be migrating. Uh, and the other is Whitman College, um, which is an Islandora uh, uh, website, but, but also part of a collaboration group of other Islandora websites. Um, so we'll cover a lot of um, the majority of the sort of Fedora installations in the community were sort of covered in these cases. Um, and then phase two, as I mentioned, uh, this is sort of validating and improving the toolkit that we, we produce. So this is uh, intended to go from June until September next year, so a few months, um, and disseminating this toolkit and trying to get some feedback on it and, and seeing if we can improve it um, so, that, uh, so that it's more usable. Uh, and then finally, trying to host some kind of a migration training workshop, um, which we have some funding to, to support uh, travel for. Uh, again, this is very kind of up in the air right now. I think we'll know more um, in the next year or so uh, with regard to whether this is an in-person event or an online event. Um, but but that is the the plan is to to kind of try to do a hands-on event to work through some sample migrations and and um, really prove out some of the uh, resources that we produce throughout the the course of this grant. Uh, and of course, we're going to be doing a lot of evaluations throughout this period. And uh, for anyone who's interested in participating. Um, you know, if you have a Fedora 3 repository or a Fedora 5 uh, repository and, and you're, you're interested in trying some of these resources and providing some feedback, um, certainly get in touch. Um, uh, we'll be soliciting feedback throughout the, um, throughout the process, but uh, uh, this is going to be um, a big part of the work that we're doing. Uh, and then, of course, after the grant ends, we're, we're going to continue to support these efforts, build and support the toolkit, et cetera. Uh, and that's really only possible because we do have ongoing funding from a number of, of partner institutions. Um, this is just sort of logos of the institutions that fund uh, Fedora as a program and, and really is the only way that we're able to do um, 
continue to support and, and build the software and and uh, uh, and support the, the tooling and the migrations uh, after the fact. Um, so I certainly want to say thanks to all the institutions that support us and, and encourage others to, to consider um, becoming a member if you're not uh, uh, already to make sure that we can continue to, to support this work. So I have a few links here. I won't go through all of these in detail, but there are lots of ways to get involved. Um, there are, there's a utility now that you can run that converts Fedora 3 data to Fedora 6 data. Fedora 6 is in more or less an alpha state, um, so it, it is something that you can download and run. Um, we do have monthly code sprints that anyone's welcome to participate in. Um, and we do have a Slack channel, which I think some of you are aware of. And of course, there's a link there for joining as a member. Uh, my contact info is here. You can always get in touch with me if you have any uh, questions or comments. Um, and I, I think I'll stop there and I, I maybe have a couple of minutes um, for questions. Uh, I'll take a look at the chat here. Oh yeah, thanks for that, Chris. Um, yeah, so we have time for questions. Yeah, so you can either, if you want to ask a question for yourself, you could just uh, unmute yourself and ask a question or, or raise the hand and I'll um, try and order them. Or if you just want to type it into the chat, then we can uh, manage it that way instead. Uh, here is uh, Janne speaking. Uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, David, is there a concrete schedule for the first beta version of Fedora 6? We don't have an exact date for when the beta will be available, but our, our target is this calendar year. So um, I would expect it probably later in the year, um, maybe in November. Um, we're making quite good progress on it. Uh, I think basically all of the features are in at this point, but there's a lot of work left to do just making sure that um, uh, we've gotten rid of the uh, uh, the bugs and, and, and things like that and, and made some some improvements. So um, we're, we're still on track to have uh, a beta release uh, this year, but I, I, I suspect it'll be towards the end of this calendar year. Hi, I'm Oliver. Um, I'd like to know, um, I was curious about the database cache um, and what type of data will be stored there? Yeah, so I think we're still uh, doing a little bit of work on um, uh, on this. There are a couple of uh, database options um, that we've looked at so far. Um, so I think typically it's it's things like Postgres or uh, uh, or MySQL as as database options. Um, and right now, I think what this looks like is is um, we've had we, we do have a a simple search service. So there's kind of an index that you can. Uh, search against to get back um, information about the, uh, uh, you know, the, the contents of, of the repository. So you have a few different options. Uh, I think a lot of folks will still use um, things like Solar for more robust searching, you know, to build a, an external index. But we do also have this um, internal index that uh, 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 stores sort of the, you know, the, um, some of the more important details that you would want of uh, of resources in the repository. Um, I'll find a link after the presentation and just put it in the the collaborative notes just to give you a a, a little bit more detail there around sort of what those um, uh, what the database actually uh, looks like. But I I think right now yeah we're supporting uh, Postgres and and MySQL I think are the main um, the main ones that are that are there. But I'll I'll put a little bit uh, uh, more detail in the uh, in the notes after uh, after the talk. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. So very quickly before we move on to uh, Melissa's presentation, there's a text uh, message in the tech chat, which is um, about mentioning migration from three and five. What about 4.75 from Jay? Yeah, sorry if that wasn't clear. We're, we are supporting uh, all of those versions. So three, four, and five. And we have tooling for, for all of this right now. The, the three to six tooling is the stuff, is the one that's complete, that you basically can run that now. That's the migration utils. Um, from version four and five, we have a uh, an import export utility. Uh, and so this will export all of the data from your Fedora four or your Fedora five instance. And then we have an upgrade uh, utility that will convert that data to a format that is compatible with, um, uh, with Fedora six. Uh, and I, I think that work, I think the state of that work right now is is that it's uh, doesn't support uh, 
versions and um, uh, author uh, authorization yet, but uh, uh, so that's not done yet, but it will be soon. Um, the three to six migration path is is more or less done. Uh, we're we're just testing it to make sure that it um, uh, that is performant, but um, but that is uh, available now.